for her ministry. That's how she gave. Two mites. Two mites in the Bible was only two pennies. But that meant a lot to God. That meant a lot to him. More than the thousands and the million dollars that they are, the rest of them sold because she gave out of lack. Amen. Because she did not have. That's why she gave. And see, we church, we get it mixed up. We get it mixed up. We think that just because we don't have enough, or the economy is coming down against us. Everything is so high. I can't afford to sow into the ministry. I got bills. Do you know I got bills? I got two car notes. Why you got two car notes? You can't drive with one. You need to get rid of one so you can sow into the kingdom of God. Because the higher, you know, the only, uh, the only thing that you do for Christ is going to last. That's the only thing that's going to last. All that you do for Christ is going to last, and don't. And, and I wish, I wish the body of Christ would get out of the mentality of thinking that all preachers. I ain't gonna say. I'm not gonna say they don't. Not all preachers take the money and put their kids through college. Amen. Not all preachers take the money and buy Lear jets. They don't. Some preachers work. Some preachers have to work. I'm a preacher that do work, and I work so that I can sow into the ministry of, of the kingdom of God so it can reach nations, so that, can, so that gospel can be preached around the world. That's why I sow into the ministry, and that's why I work. I, I ain't going to be working too much longer, though, church. Amen. Come on now. I ain't going to be working too much longer. Speak that. Speak that. Be it I retire, he returns. Or he turned the situation around. Amen. And he can't do it. Yeah. And he can do it for you too. Yeah. And some of you tired, sick and tired, and tired, and sick and tired of working. Yeah. You yeah. entrepreneurs. Yeah. You entrepreneurs. Yeah. You need to start your own business. You need to pursue your dream and your heart's desires. Because God, he's he just waiting for you. He's waiting for you. You say, oh, well, I'm waiting on the Lord. I need to pray about this. What you need to pray about and what you need to wait on the Lord for? <laughs> you need to get to stepping. Amen. Can I be real with you? You need to get to stepping. Amen. I mean, you <laughs> look, when Peter saw him coming, he asked him, could I come out on the water? Some of us need to step out on the water. Some of us need to get out the boat, your little comfort zone, and Walk on the water. Y'all ain't hearing me, did Y'all ain't hearing me. I'll preach to the walls. It don't matter to me. I'll preach to the wall. Some of you need to get out of your comfort zone and stop depending on man. And start depending on God. Because he can do all but fail. He can do all but fail. Uh, Y'all ain't hearing me, did Y'all ain't hearing me. Peter saw him walking on the water and he asked him, he said, Lord, bid me to come out on the water. Where was the other disciples? Still in their comfort zone. Oh, I ain't getting out the boat. I'll drown. Oh, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't leaving this house. Uh, this, this is my home. I've been here for 15, 20 years. I ain't, I'm not moving. Nah, that's too much work. I ain't doing that. I've been on this, I've been on this job about 10 years. I, I'm, I'm safe. I, I, everybody knows first come, uh, I mean the last to come, first to leave. I ain't doing that. Now I'm not taking no chance of losing my job. I've been here long enough. Now nah, you need to get out of the boat. You need to get out of your comfort zone. Some people are so scared of change that when they saw it, the disciples, they saw him walking on the water. They so afraid of change. They wanted to stay on the boat. Some of us need to get off the boat. Get off the boat. Get in the water. Test the water. Jesus said he was going, if he's going to be with you, what are you so afraid of? You're scared of change. You tried everything else when you was in the world. No, oh, come on now. I guess I was the only one that tried everything in the world. Tried everything in the world. Everything. 
everything. You don't mind me being real with you, huh? But now when you come to Christ, you're scared. Just like the disciples. They scared because a storm arises in their life. They get scared. We as believers, we get scared when a storm comes in our life. That's when you should be strengthened. Because God said, when you're weak, I'm strong. When you're weak, I'm strong. Come on now. If God said, if I'm before you, who could be against you? Come on, come on, church. We need to get out the boat. We need to test the water. We need to test the water. We need to test the water. And, and the scripture said, when Peter came out, the storm rose up so, the wind was so boisterous, he took his eyes off Jesus. And we do that sometimes. We do that sometimes. We will walk out on faith and soon as the first bump in the road comes, we start to wobble. Oh, I'm scared now. Maybe that wasn't the Lord speaking to me. Maybe I shouldn't have did that. I should have, I shouldn't have left my husband. Oh, I shouldn't have left my wife. I should have kept that good government job. I, I was making good money. I don't know what I was thinking about. I should have never got off the boat, got out of my comfort zone. But then, see, that's how Satan gets you. He tries to distract you just like the winds. When Peter walked off the boat, Satan will do everything he can to distract you to keep your eyes from looking at God. And when he, when he knows he got you from looking from the, looking at God, not looking at Jesus, he knows he got you. When you're looking to the left and looking to the right, he got all kind of stuff going on in your life. He might send your bow ass to you. A sign demon. Come on now. Come on now. Just to distract you from getting where you're going. Oh, finally, thank you, Lord. The man, the woman I've been looking for all my life finally came. Now you done forgot about your vision. Because now you stuck on stupid. Y'all mind me being real with you, huh? You stuck on stupid now because you think this is Mr. Boaz in my life. Not so. Not so. If God puts you on assignment, if he sends you out there, you need to keep your eyes on what God is calling you to do. Y'all ain't hearing me in here. You need to keep your eyes on your prize because Satan will do everything he can to distract you. He will give you that brand new Mercedes you was looking for because he knows once you get that brand new Mercedes or whatever, I don't know whose taste that's, that ain't my taste either, Lexus is mine, but I'm not going to get caught up on my Lexus and say, I'm going to stay home Sunday and shine this baby up. I don't need to go to church today. I got what I want from the Lord. And that's the way we get church. As soon as we get what we want, Satan just laughing all the way because he knows that he's giving you something that's going to keep you from going where you're supposed to be. He knows that. He, he, he'll put a distraction out there so you can't get where you're going. He give you that, that new little girlfriend that's been making all them little googly eyes at you for, uh, for about a month now, two years. Or, or that man that's been making all them little funny little gestures and, and slipping you little notes and, and, and trying to give you that cell number and all that kind of little dumb stuff. But that ain't nobody but Satan. He's just trying to distract you to keep you from getting where you're going. That's all he's doing. Come on, y'all. We, we got to be... We got to be ever so conscious of how Satan can use somebody that's so very close to your heart. He can use them. And that's what he do because he knows if he used somebody close to your heart, he got you. Because that when it really hurts. When your son or your daughter or your husband or your wife or your mother or your father say, you ain't going to never amount to nothing. You ain't going to never be nothing. That cuts you to the heart. And that's who Satan used. He likes that. He likes to use somebody that's close to your heart because he know he got you. And he'd be sitting back laughing. And then, hey, you come back with a said, I know you didn't say that to me. Well, it wasn't because the Bible said we don't even rest against flesh and blood. I ain't wrestling against nobody in here. It's uh, powers and principalities. That's the ruler of darkness who works in the earth. 
That's Satan.